from Walking Clubhouse. Um, my name is Brandon Burbank. Um, I'm on the board of directors for the Walking Clubhouse. Um, I'm really happy to be here because today's topic and today's lesson of what we're going to do to really explore and expand upon is called diagnosis and affliction. Um, so now a lot of the things that I'm talking about and I'm going to be talking about comes from my book Come Back to Success, Relentless Commitment for a Better Tomorrow. Um, so one of those chapters is titled that. And my goal of today is to help give you guys some more perspective to help really help you think about your life and what's working for you right now and what's not working and what you need to do to help yourself so that you can become the best version of yourself, finding growth, you're uh, achieving the, the talent and the goals that you, I believe you all can achieve because I've been able to achieve a lot in my success thus far and that's kind of why it, my actions speak louder than my words. So, but I wanted to go a little bit more into depth about uh, just me as a person. Uh, I grew up in Whatcom County and I'm a speaker uh, and I speak primarily on mental health to help give others like yourselves uh, just understanding and awareness on how to become a better and a healthier person when, when something like a mental health diagnosis has kind of crept into your life and all of a sudden changed your life or had a big impact on your life and having to recognize well asking yourself hard questions about how do I overcome that how do I work on these challenges and, and these problems that are involved in my life and also in the, in the lives of many of your peers in this world today so with that being said diagnosis and affliction what does that look like does anybody know when, when they were first diagnosed if they want to share or not what were some of the things that helped them grow and find sustainability? Uh, I have PTSD and bipolar depression and OCD. I take hydroxyzine. So okay. It helps and cleaning too. Okay. So having a routine with cleaning and then some uh, medications for balancing your life. Yes. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, just to get a little bit more of what works for me in my life, things like exercise, uh, going to a church group, a uh, church community, finding happiness through relationships and also for a fulfilling career path. Those are all vital components that have helped me in light of the struggles and challenges of many things that I've had to go through in order to find self-awareness and find ways to not let myself get down and rather let that the challenges and the struggles fuel my success. So another question I'm on is diagnosis and affliction. Does anybody know what the word radical acceptance means? I'm gonna write it on the board here. Okay, so radical acceptance. Does anybody want to take a stab at what they think that might mean? I honestly not, don't really know because I know radical is kind of like extreme or like, or like the slang is different than that. But like, it just an acceptance I know what that is, but when, with the two combined, I don't really know like what that means. Okay, so it's a terminology word that I have found um, when Essentially what I've derived of it to being uh, defined as is I'm relating it to with a diagnosis. So for me, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And so by radically accepting my diagnosis, I've been able to successfully not have to worry about the, the challenges of not accepting my diagnosis. Because if I'm accepting of my diagnosis and if I'm just saying, you know what, this is what I have, this is what I'm working on constantly. Now I'm not going to let it bother me because it's already a part of my life and I'm not going to let it define me. And so that's kind of why I like to use the word radical acceptance because what that does is it gives you all more insight to just say, here's what's going on. I'm accepting the realities of, of the condition or the struggles that I'm having and I'm not letting it stop me from becoming the best version of myself. And so that's the trick is why I say Radical acceptance is the first 
and the, and the foremost step approach for recovery. Um, and so what does that look like for you though? I, I wanna ask you right now, what does a positive and a healthy recovery look like when somebody has been diagnosed with a, a condition? I'm still working on mine right now, so it's like I still have to go through a lot of hoops just to get properly diagnosed and medicines. Even though I have been diagnosed, it's still me accepting the fact and then, you know, being able to accept the fact that there is people willing to help and there is, you know, certain medications and people that will listen and talk to me. So I'm able to look at myself in a different view to say I can succeed. Awesome. That's a really good viewpoint. And to kind of go off of what you just said, the, I would say this, Re I, I fully recognize that every single person, including myself, has a different way of how they cope, how they work on their success, work on their strategies, their successes or their strengths and weaknesses. So with that being said, I wanna say that recognizing that everybody has a different way of how they are improving their life is different. So once we're able to accept that your way of recovery is different than my way of recovery, then there's a lot to be learned because you can learn and accept another person and see how they're doing, how they're improving their lives and changing their life. And if it doesn't work for you, then you just, you know, you don't accept that part of how they're living their life so that you can become sustainable and healthy. And so with diagnosis and affliction, um, I, I wrote this chapter because I really went into depth more about different, the, the different spectrum of, of diagnosis uh, conditions that exist in this world, which are, there's many. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not a clinical person, I'm, I'm just a peer-to-peer -peer perspective. Um, I have my you know, peer-to-peer um, -peer counselor certification here from the state of Washington. And so from my lived experience, I can say that there's a lot of people that have different diagnosis symptoms, different ways in how they're coping and struggling with their challenges, but by having a right community and a sense of support um, to elaborate on yourself and say, how are you getting better? And how are you working through these challenges so that you can be in a more managed state of mind? So my last question uh, before I end the um, recording, what are some tips that you want to work on in your own life as you look forward to success? Or let me put it this way. What are some, what, what are some tangible strategies that you are looking to achieve or looking to accomplish in your life in the next couple of months? I want more pride in myself. What was that? More pride in myself. More pride. Awesome. That's a great answer. Why do you say? Why do you say that? Well, because I know I've done right in my life. I know I've done wrong. But I feel like I'm really on a, a course or track of my life. Why I just want to pat myself on the back down. I just want to give myself acknowledgement for my accomplishments. That's great. That's an awesome answer. Thank you for sharing. Yes. I want to strengthen my relationships in my life, like with family and people that are family in my life too. Like, I just uh, need to like, um, for me, it's like having more self pride too. Like for me, it's self esteem. Like I can walk with confidence, but there used to be a time in my life for a lot of my twenties where if I had a negative thought, I'd be like, this might help people. The negative thought, I'd be like, get out of here, negative thought. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I can't have you in my mind or like whatever. I'm talking about like, like. You know, I'm trying to like have that barrier of negative thoughts in my mind and it's like, I don't know, it's, I, I don't do that anymore. I have more negative thoughts and I'm just like, basically kind of having to accept or combat negative thoughts and it's just like, I don't know dude, it's, um, I used to do things a lot better with, in that sense. So basically I'm trying to say that, um, keep strengthening relationships with people in my life and um, that's, yeah, that's it. Can I just add on, like, I always keep going back to places like this place and places like this because I think, like, confidence can be contagious, and I surround myself with people that have faced adversity and overcome my conditions, like, pop each other up.
Awesome. Okay. So you said more confidence? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. For me, it's like I have the confidence and I have the understanding and I have the ability, but yet I don't have a place to reside, which causes me more depression, causes me more PTSD, having to be out on the streets dealing with the day to day, when knowing that I have all these appointments and all these goals that I have to meet, but I'm able to even take a shower, wash up properly, and fight in severe depression. It's just sometimes I feel um, just not worthy enough for everything that I do complete because I feel like there's so much more that I can do, but yet I'm stuck in such a rough place that it's impossible for me to even, like to show up today, I was stuck out in the woods. I have no way to call nobody, no, not, no phone, no nothing. I was just out there. The nearest town was too far for me to carry all my gear. It was raining, all my stuff was wet. And then luckily out of nowhere, my friend shows up and picks me up. And she stayed the night one night and we had chilled, but then, to me, it was like, I still feel like I could do better to not have this situation. So I'm really striving forward to get all my appointments done. And as I do such, as one little check mark off my list, it gives me affirmation for myself that I'm doing right and I'm pushing forward in that correct direction because my main goal is to get housing. At that point, I could become a better part of society by having just somewhere where I'm not out on the streets daily feeling like trash about myself. Awesome. To me, my number one goal is getting housing at the moment. Wow. That's a great goal to have. Thank you for being so vulnerable. And thank you all for being so vulnerable with those answers. Um, I want to take a moment to take a look at the board now, seeing the goals that you've created for yourself and asking yourself to pause and say, what is it going to take? What is it going to require of me to achieve that goal? And asking yourself, what will that create out of what will be the outcome once you achieve that goal? Because, you know, having a diagnosis, yes, it's hard. I think we all know that. But I also know that it's possible to find success, to find ways to overcome the challenges and not let it stop you from getting housing, from being confident, from being yourself from being self-aware of yourself. And so that's why this lesson is just really focused on to give you that focal point of how uh, a diagnosis is a hard thing to accept, but, but it's up to you to ask yourself how do you want to live the rest of your life after that um, moment occurs in your life. And so that's kind of why I wanted to kind of give you guys more ways to really ask yourself is the way I'm living my life right now beneficial or how could it be adjusted just with a, a small little correction to help changing the, the rest of my life for the better? Well, that's what I'm saying about housing. Like if I was able to have just yeah. a little place for my puppy myself, awesome. I could yeah, thank you. actually you know, feel like I could do better just by having a roof over my head somewhere I can stay dry. And, you know what I mean? Like not having that, it's just really tough to make these appointments and it makes me more depressed and it brings me down again and then I have to take my meds because I'm having anxiety over it and it's like, right now I'm trying really hard to keep my composure, but sometimes I feel I'm doing good. So I appreciate you bringing up the radical um, acceptance because that's truly what it is. If you don't have the, the abrasiveness to accept your condition or situation, it is about being empathetic and, and accepting of other situations and understanding we're all going through some heavy times. Yeah. So like for me, it's like that's why I didn't I didn't make it here because I have nowhere to stay. And at that point, coming back here, I'm like, well, at least I got the clubhouse. Show up late, but at least I got here to go to, you know, and that makes me happy. Awesome. Anybody else have anything else they'd like to share? I just want to say how quick I was thinking about this trying. And it's like I spend a lot of time with self-care because I couldn't advise to you know, take care of yourself. But I don't want to forget. I want to walk around, I want to learn how to help care for other people when I'm trying. I want all my self-care to be all my care. I want to care for other people. So I want to learn how. That's why. Okay. Uh, so if I'm understanding you correctly, you want to learn how to care for other people? Yeah. That's great, yeah. And I would say for that, you have to learn to care for yourself first before you can take care of other people. Um, and so 
in closing, um, thank you guys so much. We can continue this dialogue, but um, thank you so much as well for everybody that um, is tuned in on uh, social media. And um, we'll do more of these lessons as time progresses. So um, feel free to think about this next question that we'll continue this discussion about. How, how are you going to tangibly put the things that we've learned today into your life for the next week? So think about that right now.